This is officially, without doubt, the biggest news from Tesla this year. I mean, what Tesla have just revealed, and it's officially been revealed by Tesla, is remarkable. I can't believe people aren't talking about this. This is potentially one of, I'd say it's one of Tesla's top three greatest innovations in their history. And it's, it's I don't know, it's like weird that everyone's just staying silent on it. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Tesla just quietly revealed they have brand new nickel-based batteries, which will go into their future cars very soon. What is the difference between Tesla's new batteries and their pre well their current batteries today there's actually a pretty major difference and Lars Moravi from Tesla has revealed why Tesla's new vehicles with these new batteries will have a, a pretty distinct advantage over today's Teslas on the road hello my friends welcome to the channel I'm Sam Evans you're watching the electric viking if you'd like to become a YouTube member of the channel, that'd be great. It'd help support the mission, which is to get more people in electric cars. I'll put a link in the description below to our YouTube member page. Tesla has a new lithium battery. It will increase longevity significantly and allow a big change to the way users operate their cars. One of the biggest news pieces from we've seen from Tesla this week, and in fact, this year, is these new batteries. I'm surprised we haven't heard more about this. Um, yeah, very, very strange that some of the mainstream websites, particularly mainstream EV sites, have chosen to not talk about it. Anyhow, Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering, Lars Moravi, during an interview on Jay Leno's Garage, revealed that Tesla's next-gen nickel-based battery technology is much more durable than its existing technology. And as a result, Tesla will suggest charging to the previous recommendation of 90% instead of today's 80%. Tesla, like all car manufacturers, says, if you don't have a lithium-ion phosphate battery in your car, then the best thing to do, what you should do is the recommendation, just charge your battery to 80% daily. If you want to go on a long drive on the weekend, you know, go on a road trip, yeah, charge to 100% in those instances. But for daily use, charge to 80%. And like I said, Tesla is not alone in this instance. Pretty much every manufacturer using NMC batteries or ternary batteries of some sort, they suggest the same thing. Now, I'm intrigued by this. I'm going to tell you why in a minute, because I think there's more to this story than what's been revealed by Tesla. And I'll tell you what that is. But I should mention that not a Tesla app says this isn't just a minor tweak. It's the result of a material science breakthrough that gives Tesla's long range and performance batteries almost the same everyday convenience as their lithium ion phosphate counterparts. Now, I think they could be lithium ion phosphate, but a hybrid version. I'll get to that in a minute. A recently published patent application, US 202403, bunch of numbers, provides a look at the science behind this improvement, revealing how Tesla's updated techniques create a more resilient, longer lasting battery cathode. It's the cathode that's been changed. To understand the importance of this change, says not a Tesla app, one must fi first understand the two distinct battery lineups that Tesla have. So Tesla have lithium ion phosphate batteries in a lot of their cars worldwide. They used to have that op them as an option in their cars in the United States, but they don't anymore because of the tariffs on Chinese batteries. So now Tesla just use NMC batteries in the US, and that's, all you that's the only choice you have. But outside of the US, for all of Tesla's standard range cars, so the cars made in Germany and the cars made in China, which are shipped all around the world, the standard range versions, the most popular version, has a lithium ion phosphate battery. And yeah, you can charge them to 100% every day. Uh, there's no change to really your battery degradation or battery life by doing that. So that is one advantage to them. However, they do currently require more precise temperature gradients to work better. If the temperature is too hot or too cold, lithium ion phosphate batteries can sometimes struggle, as you probably have seen with various stories in the media. 
Now, it's true that newer generation batteries that have been revealed over the last 12 months in China, various lithium ion phosphate technologies have worked out a way to get around that. That's no longer an issue for them. But those batteries aren't really in most cars yet. They will be in the future, but they're not yet. Nickel-based NMC or NCA batteries or NMCA batteries are the high performance marathon runners. They have a higher energy density than lithium ion phosphate. And that is an advantage in terms of being able to provide more range for the same battery size. They're also lighter as well. Their energy density alongside their peak power output is good, but the I think the lighter weight also helps improve efficiency. It allows for longer range and quicker acceleration that you'll find in Tesla's performance models, the long range version and the performance models. The trade-off to this performance though is the recommendation to charge to only 80% daily. Personally, I don't listen to these recommendations because I think if you look at the studies, it doesn't make much difference if you charge 80% or not. And I'm talking massive studies where they've looked at th thousands and thousands of cars over long periods of time. And people that charge their cars to over 80%, it didn't really make any difference. That's just quietly between you and me. Anyhow, this created a convenience gap in the minds of many owners who think that they shouldn't charge above 80%. Lars Moravi says, though, that Tesla has closed the gap between lithium ion phosphate and nickel-based batteries by half, making their high-performance batteries almost as user-friendly as their standard-range lithium ion phosphate counterparts, but without any of the drawbacks. So what is this secret source? Well, I don't think Lars is telling the full, the full story here, and I did a video on this because, actually, the truth is Tesla signed a deal with LG Energy Solutions who make Tesla's batteries in, well, many places around the world, for a new type of battery, which is actually a lithium ion phosphate battery doped with nickel. And it has the energy density of nickel-based non-LFP batteries, so nickel-based NMC batteries, but the advantage of lithium ion phosphate and the price advantage as well. They're much cheaper to manufacture. Now, I don't know if Lars is being coy here and not telling us the full story, but he's telling us, you know, at least something. He says Tesla has managed to pull off this change by their patent titled doped cathode active materials and methods thereof. Anyway, this patent details a process for Tesla to improve the chemistry of their nickel-based batteries. This helps increase their performance and crucially their long-term longevity. Now, yes, if He's really just saying it's about this patent. We're all we're going to do to change these new batteries to our nickel-based actual NMC batteries is just is use nickel in this way that they're outlining here. Then sure, these are not the batteries that I talked about in my video that were discovered. Well, well I discovered them based on information revealed from Tesla. This could be a different concept. Anyway, this core innovation is doping a material science technique in which small precise amounts of other metallic elements or dopants are mixed into the primary cathode material during manufacturing. Not a Tesla app says that this process helps address the primary drawback of many cathodes, which of often experience a significant loss of charge capacity over repeated charge cycles. So after a couple of hundred thousand kilometers, um, you see battery degradation in this part of the battery. And that causes the, the battery to have provide less range for the car. Tesla has managed to increase the charge retention from 83% with its older cathodes to 91% with its newer doped cathodes. That's a big change, 83 to 91%. According to the patent, the standard non-doped cell loses nearly 20% of the energy capacity over time. They don't stipulate how long this is, but I'm assuming that it would be a fairly long time. In stark contrast, a cathode doped with a combination of four elements that Tesla are planning on using loses less than 5% of its capacity over the same period. So this, this change in Tesla's batteries is unquestionably one of the biggest game changers. I think it's the biggest technological innovation in Tesla's announced official battery tech we've ever seen. Because basically Tesla is saying you can charge the battery to 90% every day regularly and 100% when you need to. But in addition to that, your battery degradation, even when you charge it to this higher level, will be a fraction of what it is currently. They're going from a battery that they say over time loses 20% of its energy density to only losing 
5%. In other words, Tesla is basically saying, yeah, yeah, we've fixed energy density problems and capacity loss over time. That is insane. Now, I don't know how true this is and how accurate this is and how, uh, how this is going to really play out in the real world, but from what Tesla is saying, if they've gone from 20% battery degradation over time, we know Tesla batteries, but by the time they get to 20% battery de- de- degradation, they've normally been used for probably around about mm, between 200,000 to 300,000 kilometers, right? A long, in fact, sometimes there's even a lot more than that. Sometimes we're talking even 200,000 to 300,000 miles to hit 20%. If Tesla is saying that over 200,000 to 300 miles, you're only going to see 5% battery degradation, then that is unbelievable. They've just discovered something that's just game-changing, no doubt about it. That's a four-fold reduction, says not a Tesla app, in degradation, and exactly the key material science jump that Tesla needs to improve its battery technology in order to stand out among a really some really strong competition, particularly from China. This is a major engineering win and a shift to 90% charging is great, but the bigger change here is battery degradation over time. Tesla's battery degradation is already very, very good. That's true. The battery degradation is is excellent. So are other car manufacturers, to be honest. But going from 20% degradation over a long period of time to only 5% is a truly remarkable achievement. And I think we're going to see a situation where cars will just They'll basically, you'll, you'll say to yourself, you know what, I've had this car for 20 years, I'm sick of it. Or this car's 20 years old, it's, its suspension is, is toast. Um, you know, its technology, its seats are all worn, etc. But the battery is still good. And they'll use the battery for energy storage for many different uses before they eventually, decades down the track potentially, need to actually recycle it. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching. Thank you.